Hi, I'm Trish from TrishNewbury.com and welcome to the Sew Along for the Gotcha Cardigan. This cardigan is designed for knit fabrics, so uh, you're going to need an overlocker or you could use a zigzag or a um, lightning bolt stitch on your home sewing machine. I'm going to use my serger and overlock this garment together, so when you're ready, set up four threads of colour that match your fabric. You're also going to need a way of completing some top stitching. So if you're using a regular sewing machine, make sure you have a ball needle there. Um, and maybe a twin needle or a cover seam machine for doing the hems. We'll work that through as we go. So this garment has the option of pockets. You can sew it um, it's slightly longer than hip length or you could um, sew it to knee length. The garment I'm going to show you today is the knee length one with pockets. You can't sew the pockets on the shorter length unless you reposition the pockets of course. And when you're ready uh, we can get started on the pockets. So the other thing um, you're going to need is your fabric will need um, approximately 30% horizontal stretch. The fabric I'm working with today, now it's a rayon but it feels a bit like a light ponty weight. Um, it has minimal stretch um, vertically and about 30 to 40 percent horizontally. So that's about the minimum you'd get away with this. So this garment would suit your regular um, knit fabrics. You can get away with just about everything with this. Make sure they're medium weight and you'll be fine. So let's just jump straight in with the pockets. If you don't want the pockets just jump over the section. So here are our pockets. We have two cut out exactly the same and you'll see one inch, two and a half centimetres down from the top edge, a small notch and that will show you the turn position for the hand opening to go into. So what I'd like you to do is just overlock surge this top edge. You can do all four if you want to. Um, we're going to turn on the other edges so there's really no need to but the top it is quite nice if you um, seal that. If you, if you contain the edges. So once you've done that for one piece, go ahead and repeat it for the other. Okay, so what we're going to do now is go to your iron and press that top seam in that we've just overlocked and turn it at the notch position which is two and a half centimeters. When you've pressed that seam into place this is what it will look like so that's at two and a half centimeters one inch and now either use a twin needle or a cover seamer or um, your plain sewing machine and just stitch that into place. So we want to stitch directly through that surging overlocking line And I'll just sew a second row of stitching just to mimic the look of a cover seamer. And don't forget to do that on the other pocket piece as well. Then what I'd like you to do is go back to your iron and press these remaining three edges in by one centimeter three eighths of an inch. Okay, so your pocket should look like this with the sides turned in. Okay, so pop these aside for a second and come to the side front pieces and make sure you've marked in your drill holes with chalk or a pin or whichever way you prefer to mark them. So I'll just pop a pin head in here so you can see it a little bit easier. So arrange this so uh, the top of the garment's at the top and the hem of the garment's at the bottom. Please excuse the noise in the background. There is a huge building site just across the road from me and it's going to be like that for a while by the looks of things. Okay, so here is the top and here is the bottom and here is my pocket. So place your pocket um, on top like so. Our instructions tell us that the drill holes are marked at one centimeter three eighths of an inch. So what that means is if you imagine a position 
that much in and that much down from each of the finished edges and if you put a pin in like that that pin should sit directly on top of that drill hole underneath. Now I have got another full video on pockets on my YouTube channel if this isn't explanatory enough but hopefully um, this will. So when you put that in place come down to the next corner and we'll do exactly the same for the next corner. Now because it's a knit garment and knit stretches when you cut this and when you mark this things are going to get a little bit uh, not perfect. So the main thing is that you cover that drill mark the best you can. It doesn't have to be perfect. I mean in a perfect world it would be exactly one centimeter three-eighths of an inch in the correct place but the reality is this is a knit garment and the fabric will stretch. So we'll just go through each of the four corners and try and get that in the best position you can. So in addition to making sure we have the drill holes covered, what we want to do is make sure that this straight edge at the centre front is parallel to the pocket edge here and that the hem is parallel to the bottom of the pocket as well. So we have a lovely right angle there. Okay, so just go ahead and repin, rearrange that pocket until you're comfortable it's all in the correct position. And what I'm going to do is edge stitch this into place. So I'm starting on the top corner. And you can do a lovely little triangle up there if you want to. What I'm going to do is just a couple of stitches forward, a couple of stitches back. And I'm going to stitch this in place. And I'm just edge stitching it. So it's maybe 2 mil, so that's um, oh, an eighth of an inch, maybe even less than that. It's really just in from the edge to hold that pocket down. And of course you could do that whatever width you prefer. When you get to the corner here, stop with the needle, down in your work, lift, turn, pivot and rearrange. And depending on the stretch of your fabric, you might need to do quite a lot of arranging for this. Because this isn't like a super stretchy fabric, this is quite straightforward to do. Okay, so it's a really good idea to give this pocket a press and then go ahead and repeat exactly the same thing on the other side. Now we're working on the ties, or the closures with the buttons. So take two of them and place them right sides together and we're going to stitch around this outside edge at six mil quarter of an inch. Um, I'm going to use my plain sewing machine for this but I strongly suggest if you have anything with more than about a 20% or 30% stretch that you use your serger overlocker. Um, the reason I'm doing this is I just think I'm going to get a better turn at the um, curved edges. I've tried this with a stretchier fabric and it is best with the overlocker but I know this will work as well simply because this is very ponty like which is quite a firm fabric in texture um, but I strongly suggest if you do have an overlock that you surge that. So sew at 6mm quarter of an inch. Of course if you wanted this to be firmer you could always use fuse, fusible interfacing for it and then turn it wrong sides together right sides out and I'm going to top stitch. Now top stitching this is not for everyone. Um, sometimes when you top stitch it can stretch this out and go a bit wonky so don't feel like you have to. If you had a have a cover stitcher that would be a nice finish as well or a, a twin needle. Just see how you go on spare fabric. But what I'm going to do because as I said this fabric is quite firm I'm going to top stitch at um, well it's just under 6mm 
around the edge and when I'm stitching I just want to make sure that that edge is pushed all the way out I don't want to stretch it as I go I don't want that seam to end up um, sorry that stitching to end up wavy So that's um, got a teeny bit of a wave in it, but it's not terrible. And uh, what I'm going to do now is give those both, do, do another one, and give them a really good press. And we're going to sew some buttonholes. Using the pattern piece as a guide, mark in your buttonhole positions. Now, um, it's a really good idea, and I've got a whole other video on my YouTube channel about sewing buttonholes into knit fabrics. Um, the one down this end should be reasonably straightforward. Most, not all, but most um, automatic buttonholes will start at the top and sew backwards. So as long as you've got the center point here marked, this buttonhole will be straightforward. This one here, make sure that this buttonhole is centered across. So just find the center of your fabric mark it and then measure out your buttonhole. So you might like to use a test buttonhole on spare fabric just to check you know where the beginning and end is. So there's quite a lot more information in um, the video I have on uh, sewing buttons and knit fabrics. But basically all I'm doing is um, sewing with tear away stabilizer. Something's catching there, I don't know what it is. Okay. Okay, so I've got this in the correct position for my second um, buttonhole. This one's a little bit awkward, I'm just going to try and push some stabiliser there. That's better, without trying to move anything. Alright, so we'll just go. And this one, just make sure this edge is parallel with your buttonhole. So you can tidy that up and then go away and uh, sew your buttonhole on the other side. Now one of these sides has two on it, the other side only has one on it. Okay, so this side just has one buttonhole on, on it. So one side's got the two and one side's only got the one. So go ahead and open up that buttonhole. Let's sew these ties, or these fastenings, whatever you want to call them, I'll call them ties, to the side front pieces. So take your side front pieces and place them right side up. And come to the center edge and what we're going to look for is the notches top and bottom which is placement for these ties. So the notch should be here right on top and here right at the bottom. 
So we want to put the um, tie right side down, so we've got right sides together, and the single buttonhole tie goes on this side, which is the left front as you wear it, it's the right front as you're looking at it, and the two buttonhole tie here goes on this side, which is the right front as you wear it. Because what's going to happen is, once these are sewn in, they're going to turn over like so. And let me see if I can show you. So once those are sewn into place, that will go through there like so. So this is what we're looking for in the end. So just make sure you have right sides together like that. And we're going to tack stitch through the seam allowance through here. So we're just going to tack stitch six mil, quarter of an inch, just short of it. So when we go on to our overlock serger, um, we'll hide all that stitching. So you don't need to take a huge amount of, um, I'm going to say care with this. You don't need to back tack. All we need to do is just hold that in place like so and do that for both pieces. And now before you go any further, just make sure you have your buttonhole position um, marked into place. Okay. Let's move on to doing the shoulders. Right sides together match the shoulders. So take your back and place it right side up. And take the fronts, the side fronts we've just been working on, and place them right side down and you just match those armholes like that, come to the shoulder area and we're going to sew firstly this side and then that side with our serger overlocker. And one thing I should have mentioned when we're uh, doing this, we don't want to cut any fabric off. Now we're going to work on the sleeves. So the sleeves have been cut as a pair. Some people call this a mirror. One this way, one this way. And at the center top, there's a notch. Now that will sew to the shoulder seam we've just done. And on one side, there's another notch. And that shows us the back. And that will match to a notch on the back of our garment. So what does that mean? So come to the seat. <coughs> Come to the seam you've just done, the shoulder seam, and have a look at this right side up. So this is the shoulder seam we've just sewn. So this is the left hand side as if we were wearing it. So this is the left front, this is the left back. And part way down the back there's a notch. So what that means is take a sleeve and you've got a 50-50 chance of getting this right. And if you place it so that the notches match, we should have right sides together. So we're going to surge from this seam here all the way up here. We need to stretch it to fit to the crown notch, which is going to match to the slit to the shoulder seam. And then we're going to sew all the way back to the underarm on the other side. So those notch points need to match and any difference you need to just stretch gently between the two. And it's easier to sew this with the sleeve on top. So just match that underarm point and just sew a couple of stitches just to hold that into place. And what that does is it sort of anchors your work, it works like another pair of hands. And then just rearrange your work so that those two notches match. If you do, don't sew through your pins. 
And then we'll rearrange this so that that next notch will match at the shoulder and the seam needs to face towards the back. So just gently stretch the difference out between those two points. And then just keep sewing all the way through to the seam on the other side. So go ahead and repeat that on the other side. To sew the underarm and side seams, come to the wrist area and fold the garment in half so we have right sides together. And we're going to sew from the wrist hem here all the way up. We want to make sure this underarm seam matches. You want, might want to make sure that the seams face in different directions, just to make that easier for yourself. And then as we go down the side, you'll have notches to match. So just sew all the way down, matching those notches towards the hemline. And then when you've done that on one side, do the same thing on the other side. Let's work on the centre front. So you have two long pieces, so make sure they are right sides together and come to the end that's got a notch really close to it. So that is the centre back neck end. Now you'll know it's different from the other end because the other end doesn't have a notch in it for a long way. So come to the end with the notch closest. So when you've matched that short edge, we're going to surge across. All right, so come to the other short end. and just drop one of them, so we only have one. And with the remaining end, fold that so it is right sides together. And we're going to overlock serge from the raw edge across towards the fold.
Now follow that down, making sure we still have right sides together to the other end. And do exactly the same thing at the other end. And when you've done that, turn both of these out and make sure you push out that corner nicely so we have wrong sides together. Right, so go to your iron and press this. So we want to press this so that um, the seam's pushed all the way out to the edge. Press both ends of that and also take the main part of your garment and press those side seams so they face towards the back. Also, while you're at the iron, it's a good idea to press the hems into place so the body of the garment has a hem at one and a half centimeters, which is nine sixteenths of an inch, and you'll see it by the little notch here. So press this hem at that notch, and while you're on the job, come to the sleeve hems and press them into place as well. We're going to sew the centre front to the body of the garment. So come to the hemline on the left hand side. So we've just pressed a hem into place. Up the side of the garment you're going to see notches as you go. But the first thing we need to do is to place the centre front, so this is this rectangle here. We want to place the edge that we pressed here against the fold of the hemline. So the starting position is one and a half centimeters or nine sixteenths of an inch up from the hemline. And as we sew around, you will find notches to match. So make sure that all three layers are being sewn as you stitch and that you match the notches together as you go. When you get up towards the tie, the front closure position, make sure that this is facing inwards, so that's sandwiched there, and you'll also see notches to match when you get to that position there. I'm approaching the tie position here. It may be a little bulky, so just be careful when you stitch. Okay, so now we're sewing through to the centre back neck. You'll want to um, make sure those seams on the centre front face in different directions. And that seam needs to sew directly to the middle of the double notch on the garment. And now we're just going to repeat what we did until we get back to the same position we started from on the other side.
Now it's time to do the hems. I'm going to overlock surge the raw edge, edge turn mine up by one and a half centimeters and stitch it down. I'm just going to do a little um, trick in the corner here with my plain sewer. So the first thing we're going to do anyway is let's work on the body hem. I'm going to overlock tidy the entire bottom edge. To tidy up the transition edge from the center front to the side front, what I'm going to do is just fold. So this is the side front, this is the center front edge like here, and this is my hemline. At the notch position, I'm just going to wrap this around so I've got right sides together. And all I'm going to do is just stitch from the hemline up right on the edge of my serging. Just a few stitches. So what that will do is it will create a nice tidy transition from the center front to the side front before I stitch my hem into place. So do that on both sides. And when you're ready you can now stitch your hem into place and you could use a twin needle or a cover seamer and just start from this edge here so start from the side front seam through to the side front seam on the other side. There's no need to stitch the center front seam. Okay, so I'm now going to stitch my hem into place. I'm just going to use um, a plain stitch on my sewing machine. Um, just to confirm with everyone, this is a ball needle. And I want to sew my first stitch directly through my overlock serging line. And my second stitch whatever distance away I want so for me that will probably be just under a quarter of an inch so five mil For the sleeve hems, uh, go ahead and twin needle or cover seam them, whichever you prefer. What I've done is I've just run my overlock serger on the raw edge just like I did with the hem and I'm going to finish these on my machine. Now I'm using a plain stitch. This won't allow uh, any stretch. so. If you're going to do it on a plain machine, make sure you use a stitch with um, some sort of stretch in it, so a zigzag or a lightning bolt. Um, I've got stretch thread here, so stretch thread. <laughs> Thought I said that wrong for a second. So that will give me a little bit of give. The reason we don't sew it on with a plain sewing stitch is that these seams can snap when subject to any pressure. So. It's fine if you're just wearing it like this, but anytime you put any um, horizontal crossways pressure on it, those threads will snap. So make sure you um, use something that's appropriate for your fabric type. So when you've done one sleeve, go ahead and do the other. Now you might notice when I'm stitching these, I'm stitching them with my garment turned inside out. That's because I have pressed those into place before I begin at one and a half centimeters nine sixteenths of an inch and I just like the way they look when they're sewn from the right side I just think it gives a bit of a nicer finish to the garment and you can sort of see what you're doing a little bit easier and I'm just sewing a second row of stitching parallel to my first pretty much because that's what I've done on uh, the rest of the garment. I mean I could go ahead and do that on the pockets again if I really wanted to make sure it was all consistent. Alright.
Right, so we're almost finished. All that remains now is to sew on the buttons. Okay, so when you're ready, you can sew the button into place. You may prefer to have some reinforcement under here. Because this is a knit, a knit garment, it's not going to be under too much pressure. Um, you've got the fabric that will have a bit of give in it. But certainly if you feel the need to, you could reinforce this with a second button underneath. I'm just going to sew these on here. So we have two buttons to sew on. One on each side. So there we have it, our garment is finished. Go ahead and give it a final press and trim off any stray threads. So thanks for joining me. I hope you enjoy the garment. Uh, don't forget to join my Facebook pattern discussion group. And if you like what you see, please hit the subscribe button. And thanks for buying my patterns. I hope to see you again soon.